Hello and welcome back to the Tea with Tomaz podcast. This is one of the few fashion podcasts on YouTube. I took a little bit of a break, a sabbatical. This is episode four. Just because there was nothing really going on in the fashion industry in the month of August. But I'm back. As you guys know, if you have watched the previous episodes, these are this is completely uncut. There's not much editing. It's just kind of throw on the camera and go. There's a lot of topics to talk about. So let's get right into it. Hopefully you guys like the setup. I know usually for my other videos, I'm like on the ground, but I kind of want to set, I kind of want to change the setup a little bit just to make it look like it's like a whole different type of content. But strap in, we have a lot of interesting topics that I want to talk about today. Um, regarding fashion industry, we have some new news today this morning, so I thought it was the perfect time to record this. So let's get into it because there's absolutely no time to waste. Okay, I'm just gonna go from like sequence of events. There's been some kind of like brand closings. There's been a few designers being announced and new brands. So we are just gonna start off with Dion Lee, Mr. Dion, Mr. Diane from Australia. Last week, it was announced that the brand Dion Lee would be going into administration, aka it is closing. If you guys don't know what administration is, it's kind of like a wrap up period of a company. So basically, if a company is deemed no longer profitable or if they can't continue any operations, then they kind of go into like administration, basically to just tie up all loose ends or to pay back people that they may owe money to, hint, hint, allegedly, allegedly. Um, I'm not trying to get sued. But yeah, so if you guys remember Barney's New York, when their company kind of went under, they had actually a long period of ad administration. Um, it was almost like a year where they kind of had to wind down the sales. I actually remember going to like the last week of the Barney store open and it was like a mess. There was like clothing everywhere. It was like sales and stuff. Anyway, so if you've ever, even like Matches Fashion went into administration the last month, but yeah. So Dion Lee is closing. I mean, when I saw this, I can't say I was necessarily shocked, if I'm being honest. I feel like there's a lot of niche, super niche brands in fashion right now that are kind of doing the same thing. And I feel like with Dion Lee, it was like a very, very specific kind of clothing line that in my opinion was never going to be super profitable so when you think of Dion Lee you think of super sexy tank tops that I see a lot at the club you think of really kind of modern edgy tailoring you know like a blazer might be cut a little higher on the waist and then it might have shoulder pads on it that's kind of what I thought and as it's it has been going on, I think, for almost 15 years. I think it was just over 10 years. And I never really saw it kind of evolving into kind of a, not, I don't want to say a profitable brand because I don't know the numbers of it. So I'm just going to keep it cute that way. But I never really thought of it as kind of evolving with the times. Uh, if you see the previous collections versus now, it was kind of always the same thing. And I am really here for a brand kind of cementing its, aesthetics and its wardrobe codes. I just think with Dion Lee, it was maybe not the best brand ethos for the brand. And I do think Dion Lee is a great designer. I think some of his collections, I honestly, some of his earlier collections, which he showed back in Australia, I personally thought were really, really good. I just think when he took it to New York, maybe he had grandiose dreams that were kind of like not realistic. I know, for example, when I started reading into it, he was, he has about three stores in Australia, one of them in Sydney. He was gonna open a New York store. I really wanna stress this to you guys a lot that when brands open stores, it costs a lot of money. Like when I say a lot of money, I mean a lot of money. Think about the Mew Mew on 54th Street on Madison Avenue. That Mew Mew store, I actually went to it last time I was in London and it was honestly like a really, really small store. That store on Madison probably cost like I'm not even kidding, maybe like 15 million to operate once a year on rent alone. So it costs a lot of money, you guys. And I, I just think like when you're a brand who hasn't necessarily found the clientele or the community to sustain that, to be opening a bunch of stores, it's just not realistic. And it's also, I also find it to be kind of like not a smart move. I know Alexander Wang is on his 
like a hundred and twentieth store right now or something like that. I actually could be wrong. But he's opening a lot of stores and he just opened one in my city. And every time I walk by, it's quite empty. I don't think for the necessarily emptiness is a sign of strong or good business because you can always just be contacting clients through WeChat or social media. But I'm just saying don't rush into things. Don't be opening stores just because you think that there's a clientele. I mean, every time you go on Essence, Dion Lee would be sitting at 70% off and every single size would be available. So I just think it's a shame. I never want to see a designer who you can tell worked really hard on his business fail or it's not really necessarily, I wouldn't call it a fail. I think it's just run its course. And I think you should be really proud of a brand lasting for 10 years or 12 years or however long it is. I think that's something to be proud of. And then in the future, we can just try and do something else. I just think if you are a smaller scale of brands, I wouldn't, I just think it was the retail. I wouldn't recommend opening stores. If I'm being honest, I just think that really was like, because then you're just trying to catch up with the bills and you're never going to be profitable unless you have like a really, really big fashion moment. And yeah, I don't know. It's sad, but you know, I'm sure he's a great designer. Maybe he can go work in-house at a brand like uh, Givenchy or something like that. And he can just do like an in-house designer because at the end of the day, Dion Lee is a great designer. Speaking of Givenchy, it has just been announced today that Sarah Burton, who worked at Alexander McQueen under Lee for like over 20 years, is now the creative director of Givenchy. When I saw this, I actually was not surprised because I actually heard this rumor back in like January and February that he was that she was in talks to be the new creative director of Givenchy. I don't know if you guys remember, but they were also talking about Jack and Moose. I believe Jack Moose was also in the running for this position, but I don't know. I'm I'm happy. I think Sarah Byrne is a great designer. Was I really loving her McQueen near the last five years? Honestly, absolutely not. It for me it wasn't that great. I thought the accessories could have been better. I've talked about this in the previous podcast, I believe. I actually touched on this topic before that I actually think Givenchy is a hard company to have a creative director for, just because I think the men's is so farther from what Hubert Givenchy was doing for women's wear. You know, the men's wear is very street self focused. It's a lot of logos. It's a lot of easy, casual, luxury designer clothing with logos for men that want to show off logos. And then you have the women's wear side, which is very couture based. You know, Hubert was a couturier that then turned into ready to wear. So I think that's what they're trying to go back into. I'm just worried about the menswear side. If you guys remember when Claire White Keller was at Givenchy previously, she famously did really, really terrible men's collections. Her women's wear was beautiful. I personally wasn't a big fan of it, but I do think that she kind of leaned on the couture side of the Givenchy brand. And I think, I think this is what they're trying to get Sarah to do. I'm just worried about the men's division. In my opinion, I think they should have hired someone for women's wear and then someone for men's wear. I know that's like kind of a lot of money, but I actually think like, honestly, as much as I make fun of him, like I, I said this in the previous podcast, but Ruigi Villenger or whatever, who, the, who does Rude, I actually think that he would do a really good job of doing Givenchy men's wear because he's tapped into the culture of the Givenchy client. He knows what a man who is buying designer clothing wants to wear. I'm happy for Sir Burn. I'm just like a little worried about that I just think the men's division is just gonna be an afterthought. And, you know, maybe they can have someone from the men's team really focus on it and she can just kind of focus more on the women's wear. That's what I'm suggesting, but I mean, what do I know? But I mean, Sarah Burton is, is just a fashion genius. I think she is so well respected in the fashion industry that whatever she does, I'm really excited for. I mean, I was surprised because I thought she would take maybe like a little bit of a break from designing just because she was at McQueen for like 20 years. But um, they said that she's in meetings this week and then she will show her first collection in March, 2025. So, I mean, I am I thought she was gonna take a whole year off. I wonder if LVMH had to pay Keering like a non-compete amount just because I know a lot of these contracts are about, you can't really work anywhere else for like a year and a half, especially if you're at like a huge house like Gucci or McQueen. But other than that, I think it's very exciting, you know, and yeah, I love Sarah Burton. Was she doing her best at McQueen at the end? I don't believe so, but whatever. She can, I know she's just gonna do the most amazing couture work 
at Givenchy. And then maybe that is what Givenchy needs. Maybe we need to stop focusing on the casual street style vibes and the logo mania and just really take it into what it's supposed to be, which is honestly a couture house. Another um, designer announcement is Hyder Ackerman at Tom Ford. This one I had a little bit of opinion on. I'm, I'm just gonna say it. I'm not a huge fan of Hyder Ackerman, like at all. Actually, I really don't. I, he's a very attractive man. Actually, if Hyder Ackerman would like to call me, I would, I would definitely answer the phone. I'm not just, I'm not really into the collections. I think it's like a very, very niche aesthetic that I'm actually really confused about why Tom Ford would hire him. I personally thought the Peter Copping stuff was actually pretty okay. Like, I mean, you gave him, you gave him two seasons. It's so, ugh. You guys just irritate the F out of me, honestly, because these brands are, are just so disrespectful to these designers. They like build someone up, they hire them. They do the whole press release, they do the picture, they post on Instagram, they're like, Tom Ford is pleased to announce Peter Copping. And then you give him two seasons and then you fire him. It's honestly disrespectful, actually, and I actually think it's like really, really irritating. And if I was a designer working right now, I would be very careful about what jobs I'm taking. First of all, nobody even knows if the stuff is selling because it literally just hit stores. Nobody knows if people are reacting to it. It's just like, I really don't like this climate of where we are right now, where brands aren't respecting how much work these designers do and to just dispose of them after two seasons I actually think it's like really really disrespectful other than that I know Hyder Ackerman is one of the most loved designers in fashion since always he's kind of like Albert Elbaz he's really like really loved and you know Tilda Swinton Timothy Chalamet are always wearing him for red carpets I f just feel like Tom Ford is really that sexy, old Hollywood glamour, and I'm not sure how to recommend does that. He, he's, he's a little bit like edgy, kind of vampiric, dark, benevolent kind of design that he does. A lot of satin, which I really don't like. Like those satin suits he always does, I'm just not a fan. I'm also worried about accessories. I know Tom Ford does really, really well with accessories. I know, you know, the lock sandals that like all the women like to wear. He's not very well versed in accessories if I'm, if I'm being honest so I'm something a little bit skeptical about that but I mean I'm open to it I feel like Tom Ford honestly can't get any worse it can't get any better like Tom Ford is just one of those brands that are just going to coast along because of its accessories division and the beauty so like I think I'm open to it I'm open to seeing what's going to be happening I just I'm a little skeptical and I'm not really that excited in my opinion I and that's like my own personal bias. I don't personally think that he's like that great of a designer, but we shall see. We shall see what he's going to do. And I wanted to kind of talk about, finish off the topics with New York Fashion Week. So New York Fashion Week is happening right now. I am working on my runway roast, my reviews of all the shows that I really care about. And I wanted to talk about this. I don't know if you guys have seen on social media, these kind of like stunts that people are following on New York Fashion Week. And I just think it's kind of like divulge. It's kind of diluting what New York Fashion Week is becoming. I actually think New York Fashion Week is kind of a joke right now. There's not really that many exciting designers going. I mean, I think that Alaya chose to show in New York was a huge, huge help for the event. I think having a French powerhouse like Alaya, one of the most loved and iconic houses to show in New York definitely helped him a little bit but then I just see these silly little stunts like I see little Kim arriving late to um Christian Siriano like as a runway and then they walk her in and she's like interrupting the whole show it's so ludicrous and then I see yesterday Tiffany Haddish like Tiffany Haddish was sitting with Paris Hilton and then Kathy Hilton and then Kathy Hilton because Kathy Hilton seems to think that she lives in her own world and everything she does, she just she just behaves like she lives in her own world. We've seen Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She dared Tiffany to get up and close the show. Like, you know when at the end of a runway show, like, all the models walk? She, like, dared her to, like, get up and walk in front of the models. So she did that. And it's just so stupid. It is so, so stupid. And it's disrespectful. It's embarrassing, quite honestly. And Tiffany Haddish, you look like a joke. I'm sorry, you are such a joke. I think it's so, like if I was Monse and I'm looking at the monitor and Tiffany Haddish is walking in front of my models, I'd be like, security, get this woman off or get her, put her back in the seat. It's completely disrespectful. I'm so over these like gimmicks that these shows do. 
whether Monse told her to do that or it was Kathy Hilton's doing, it's just like this whole thing has turned into a joke and I really, really don't know how we can like kind of stop it from becoming a joke. To me, New York Fashion Week is a joke. London Fashion Week is kind of getting there, even though I do like the creativity and the kind of like fake it till you make it aspect of London Fashion Week. I just think New York is a joke. Everybody who goes is a joke. It's just like, I can't, honestly. I, that was like my last straw when I saw Tiffany Haddish in her fucking green jumpsuit or whatever, 12 months or whatever, doing a fucking walk because Kathy Hilton told you to. If Kathy Hilton told you to walk, if to jump off Empire State Building, would you do it? Like, it's just like a joke. Honestly, I'm a little fired up right now because I just think it's, it's completely disrespectful. I think these PR gimmicks are so lame. If your collection has, if your collection has no truth to it or if there's nothing important about your collection that you have to like kind of get pressed to have little Kim be late to your show because she's walking in or like walking the runway at the end like then you shouldn't be showing at New York Fashion Week and you, sh you should actually be focusing on doing a better collection mic drop honestly like I'm so tired of it honestly okay so <laughs> I was a little fired up right there but I think that's a little bit for the main topics. I kind of just wanted to ease into back into the podcast a little bit. Um, so at the end, I always do my Tomas Culture Roundup, all the best music, TV shows, everything that I'm watching right now that I think is important and I think you should be watching right now. So let's get into it. I'm just going to talk about music. I actually haven't been listening to a lot of new music lately. Um, I do like the new Camila Cabello Magic Edition of her old album, CXOXO that she released a few months ago. I think it's great. Some of the old music that I've been listening to is Contra by Vampire Weekend. So good. It's, ugh, this kind of guitar pop that they were so known for, I just absolutely love it. It's, it. it's so nostalgic, but I really love it. And they're coming here on the end of September, but I won't be here, so I'm really, really sad. I really wanted to go see them in concert, but maybe next time. And then AM by Arctic Monkeys. I've been kind of re-exploring the Alexa Chung and Alex Turner era, so Tumblr, and I just, ugh, it like brings back a lot of memories, so I've been listening to this album nonstop. I really, really like that. In terms of what I'm watching, I'm not really watching anything right now. I'm obviously watching Real Housewives of Orange County. Once again, I am asking you, watch Real Housewives of Orange County, it's so good. And then Industry, I started Industry, and you guys, I generally think it's like the best show on television. I saw this tweet that was like, this video of Jenna Ortega, if you guys have seen the movie X, where she's like screaming because she finds her friend is like dead. And it's like industry actors when the scene doesn't revolve having intercourse or sniffing a substance because the whole show is basically that. But I love it. I think it's so... I really want them to lean into... I was talking about it with my friend who she says in third season. I want them to lean more into the salaciousness. Like I want there to be murder. I want there to be backstabbing. Right now it's, I'm on like mid way through season two and I've heard a little bit of tea of season three but I really want them to just go full out and just be so controversial and salacious because genuinely I feel like these jobs are like that um but yeah I'm really enjoying it it's definitely a movie to watch every episode they're like 58 minutes so it's definitely sometimes I have to like go on my phone because it's such a long episode but it's really really good beautiful performances by Edward Harper and Yasmin top three in fact I would give them best actor and actresses at the Emmy Awards just blows me out of the water how good they are in every single scene um and yeah I think that's everything that I'm enjoying right now again I really just wanted to leave in leave, I wanted to ease in back into the podcast and kind of just talking without editing so thank you so much for watching you guys I really appreciate it hopefully let me know if you guys even like this kind of content if you guys don't like it I'm probably just not gonna make it but there were a lot of topics to talk about here and yeah I feel like this was like a good kind of going back into the co content of the podcast. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this and stay tuned for the fashion review of New York Fashion Week. As much as I hate, as much as I say that I hate it, there were actually quite a few good shows. So I'm really excited to bring that up for you either this Sunday or the following week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.